In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can use the masking brush and masking bug in the Layers Home module. Let's start with the masking brush. The masking brush can be used to draw out selections of one layer and reveal the layer underneath. In this case here, I have a layer that is exposed for the water, and then below that is a layer that exposes for the sky. Now, with the masking brush selected, look at the tool options bar at the top. There are two modes, Paint Out and Paint In. Paint Out will remove areas from the active layer, and Paint In will draw them back. Next is the brush size, followed by Wacom controls, where if you select the W for Wacom pressure sensitive tablets, you can use the pressure sensitivity of your stylus to control how large or how small the brush size is. Next is Feather, which controls the transition from the hard edge, or inner circle, to the soft edge, or outer circle of the brush. And finally, you have the opacity, which is the strength of the brush. At 100%, the entire layer that you draw on will be removed, revealing the layer below it. If you want to remove at a slower or more gradual rate, decrease the opacity. The perfect brush gives you the option of getting edge detecting masking as you draw. So let's start with just a standard mask. Here with my brush, I'm going to go ahead and start drawing out areas that I want to remove. You can see how, just by drawing, we're revealing the layer underneath. Now, as I reach the horizon, the perfect brush will be a great solution for masking because it has edge detecting technology. All I need to do is select the checkbox for perfect brush, and now as I start drawing, it'll automatically detect the edge of the horizon, making it easy for me to control the areas of the layer that I want to keep and the areas of the layer that I'm going to reveal below. If I approach an area where I make a mistake, and I start drawing in the part of the ocean that I don't want, all I need to do is change the mode from paint out to paint in and start drawing that information back. Now let's take a look at the masking bug. The masking bug is similar to the masking brush, except it will mask out at an entire plane at once. I've selected the masking bug from the tool well on the top left, and now all I need to do is click on the image. From here, the masking bug is displayed. The body of the bug is dictated by the shape of it, so in this case, there is a planar bug. If I go to the tool options bar at the top and change the shape from rectangle to round, the bug now turns into a circle. For this video, we're going to stick with planar. The bug also has legs and antenna. The legs are indicated by the solid colored circles, and the antenna have the hollow point circles. The legs themselves control the size, width, and orientation of the bug, so if I drag out, or drag over, I can control the overall look of that bug. The antenna on the right controls the layer opacity and feather. So if I bring this antenna in and out, that'll control the opacity of the layer itself and the feather. As I bring the feather to the left, we have a nice smooth transition. And as I bring it down, we have a really hard transition over here. The antenna on the left controls the mask opacity. So as I bring the opacity towards the center, the entire mask is hidden. And as I bring it back out, the full mask is shown. Even after I make adjustments with the antenna, I can reposition the bug as I see fit. If I want to flip the mask so that the bottom part is revealed and the top part is hidden, I can click on the invert button, which is located on the top right of the tool options bar. By clicking it, I'll flip the mask around. If I want to start all over with my mask, I can click on the reset button, which is located right next to the invert button. 